After her death, an elderly woman left behind a $3.7 million mansion, but her will had a surprising twist. Before we embark on this captivating journey, we kindly invite you to show your support by engaging with our content. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel, and leaving a thoughtful comment stating, I've subscribed. Additionally, if you find this story as inspiring as we do, don't forget to share it with your loved ones. Your support means the world to us. The mansion was bequeathed to a young man who was not one of her three sons. Lizzie Campbell's husband, Andrew, was a successful entrepreneur, and after he tragically died in a car accident, he left his entire estate to his cherished wife. As a result, Lizzie and their three sons lived comfortably and never wanted for anything. But as Lizzie grew older, she longed for her sons to be near her and take care of her. Despite having a caretaker, she often reflected on how nothing could replace the presence of family. The once vibrant house had become eerily silent, a stark reminder of the emotional distance between her and her sons. When her sons moved out, Lizzie felt abandoned, which led to depression and neglect of her health, ultimately resulting in a cancer diagnosis. The prognosis was grim, with doctors giving her less than a month to live. Devastated, Lizzie wept at the news and yearned to see her sons one last time. She asked her caretaker, Marilyn, to invite all three of them to dinner. Unfortunately, their responses were far from what she hoped for. Dinner? Matt, Lizzie's eldest, snapped. Marilyn, mom needs to understand that we're not high school kids anymore who can drop everything for her. We have our own families and jobs. I'll see if I have time next month, but this month is out of the question. The hardest part was that Lizzie overheard everything. Tears filled her eyes as she listened to Matt's reaction. Matt, it would mean the world if you could find time to visit this month. Your mother's health is declining and she really wants to see you, Marilyn urged, concealing the severity of Lizzie's condition as instructed. But Matt was indifferent. Just take her to a hospital, Marilyn. Why are you pestering me? I'm not a doctor he retorted before abruptly hanging up. Lizzie's tears streamed down her face, but she quickly wiped them away. Oh, these children, she said with a forced smile. You see, Marilyn, my Matt is so responsible now, always busy with his own family. Yes, ma'am, Marilyn replied sorrowfully, aware that Matt's words had deeply hurt Lizzie and that nothing could comfort her. With a heavy heart, she called Tom and Harry, but things only got worse. Tom didn't answer, and Harry's response was, I'm sorry, Marilyn, but I can't come. I'm traveling to India for business. Mom will just make a fuss. Tell her I'm unwell and I'll visit soon. And so all three sons declined her invitation in one way or another. Heartbroken, Lizzie retreated to her room, locked the door, and cried all night while clutching her husband's picture. I'm so sorry, Andrew. We were so focused on providing for our children that we forgot to teach them the importance of family. Marilyn's heart ached for Lizzie. She knew that no matter how much she tried, words alone couldn't comfort the elderly woman. Then, an idea struck her. Lizzie was close friends with her neighbor, Mrs. Oliver, a poor widow living in a modest cottage with her son, Nathan. Nathan, at 25, was confined to a wheelchair after a construction accident and worked as a cashier at a local grocery store. Despite their humble home, there was more love and warmth there than in Lizzie's grand villa filled with priceless artifacts. Lizzie had always valued love and care over material wealth, which is why she bonded with Mrs. Oliver so quickly. Seeing Lizzie's despair after her son's rejections, Marilyn immediately called Mrs. Oliver. They're not coming, Mrs. Oliver exclaimed, appalled by the son's cruelty. I shouldn't have called them in front of her. She heard everything and it hurt her deeply, Marilyn admitted. You did the right thing by calling me, Marilyn. Those boys need to learn a lesson, Mrs. Oliver began, but Marilyn interrupted her. There's something else, ma'am. Lizzie only has a month to live and she desperately wanted to see her sons one last time, Marilyn revealed. Mrs. Oliver gasped, covering her mouth in shock. What? Are you serious? We just found out today, but her sons don't know yet, Marilyn explained. Mrs. Oliver wasn't about to let some jerks get Lizzie down. After a moment's pause, her eyes held a steely determination. 
I know just how to cheer her up, Marilyn, she declared. Lizzie's practically family, and I won't let her final days be filled with sadness. And Mrs. Oliver was a woman of her word. Later that day, she confided in her son, Nathan. Honey, she said, her voice firm, for the next month, Mrs. Campbell isn't just our friend. She needs our help. Treat her like you would me, all right? Nathan, ever the loyal son, readily agreed. Lizzie was initially bewildered by Mrs. Oliver's sudden shift in attention. Visits became frequent, filled with laughter as they cooked together, reminisced over classic movies and explored shops. Loneliness was replaced with a newfound joy. Meanwhile, Nathan became Lizzie's silent guardian, fetching medications, driving her to appointments, and even orchestrating a surprise. It's my birthday, Mrs. Campbell, he fibbed, but the doctor said you couldn't travel, so I brought the party to you. Just couldn't imagine celebrating without you. Tears welled in Lizzie's eyes as she embraced him. My own sons never did anything like this, she whispered, her voice thick with emotion. That's all right, Mrs. Campbell, Nathan replied with a warm smile. You're like another mother to me, so consider me your son now. It was a simple gesture, but for Lizzie, it meant the world. Weeks turned into a month, and Lizzie's health began a slow decline. During her final days, only a handful of people remained by her side, Nathan, Mrs. Oliver, and Marilyn. Lizzie, feeling a shift in her priorities, decided to update her will, keeping her sons in the dark about the changes. One peaceful night, Lizzie passed away in her sleep. Marilyn, heartbroken, contacted Lizzie's sons, summoning them for the funeral. Her sons, however, weren't driven by grief, but anticipation of a hefty inheritance. They envisioned a windfall, a significant sum of money, no doubt. But fate had a different plan. Wait, what? The mansion goes to some Nathan? Who is he? Matt sputtered, disbelief lacing his voice. Mr. Williams, the lawyer, held up a hand, silencing the outburst. There have been some changes, gentlemen. Your mother updated her will recently. The $3.7 million mansion is now bequeathed to Mr. Nathan Oliver. Before Mr. Williams could finish, Harry's voice cut in, sharp with disbelief. Millions of dollars? Just handed over to some stranger we've never even met? This is insane! There's more, Mr. Williams continued calmly. While the mansion goes to Mr. Nathan Oliver, the remaining assets will be divided between Mrs. Claire Oliver, Miss Marilyn Jones, and the charity your mother championed. Unfortunately, there's nothing left for the three of you. Harry started to rant, his voice rising in anger. What was the matter with her? Did she lose her mind? How could she... A voice, firm yet gentle, interrupted his tirade. She made the best choice, Marilyn declared, her voice tight with anger. You treated her horribly. Barely a visit, no phone calls, and now you think you deserve her money? Did you even know she had cancer? That's what took her from us. Matt, defensive, mumbled. But Mom never told us. Because you never gave her a chance to, young man, Mrs. Oliver snapped. She called, wanting one last moment with you boys, but you were too busy with yourselves. You left her all alone. Frankly, I'm glad you got nothing. Furious, Matt spat. Think you'll just steal this from us? We'll see you in court. He stormed out, his brothers following with matching scowls. Their bluster proved empty, though. They lost the case soundly. Meanwhile, Nathan, with his mother and Marilyn by his side, honored Lizzie's spirit in a heartwarming way. They established a charity, a haven for lonely seniors, often neglected or mistreated by their own families. It was a place filled with the love and care Lizzie so desperately craved in her final days. What can we learn from this story? Elderly people need love and care, and we should never hesitate to provide it. Lizzie longed for her sons to be close to her in her old age, but they never took the time to care for her. Additionally, goodness is like a boomerang. It returns to you in one way or another. Mrs. Oliver, Nathan, and Marilyn cared for Lizzie in her final days, and in return, they received her inheritance. If you enjoyed the video, Please leave a like and comment on what you would have done in her situation. We love sharing these stories with the world, so feel free to let us know how we can improve our videos. Take this as a reminder to call your loved ones today.
take care and see you in the next one.